Welcome back. Well, uh, it seems as though the biggest accidents for today's trade have to be Equitas and Ujjivan. We know that uh, there is news on the back of those stocks, but down 20% and 22% respectively. So no sort of respite which is coming on these counters. Separately, it is the mid-cap index which is absolutely flat at this point in time. So there's been some amount of stability which has come in with an advanced decline ratio which is quite even keel at this point in time. But Manisha Gupta joins in to tell us more about what she's tracking in the commodity and currency space, Manisha. Thank you so much for that, Ekta. Well, it is about the crude oil prices where we are ending this week and this month as well on a negative note. We have seen 9 to 10 percent of a decline for the crude oil prices. The latest is that the Saudi Arabia oil minister says that the supplies in the fourth quarter are expected to be in surplus and that the OPEC and allies will now have to change their course of action to ensure price support and, uh, and no over surplus really in the international markets. But to talk more about the crude oil prices and the supply demand scenario, we are joined by Paul Hickens of S&P Global Plats. Paul, hi, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, what is your sense on the price action that we have? Very volatile and the kind of turnaround that we saw in prices down by 10% in this month itself. What would you give that to? Well, there's a, there's a few aspects, really. The first of all, there's, we've seen U.S. stocks increasing. Fifth consecutive month, we've seen that. And traders are looking at that seeing how much how many stocks are building we've got this, and it's basically a thought that that there is enough crude in the market there's we've seen it with iran with the, the supply risk around iran everyone has been getting quite fearful there's been a lot of concern about shortages in the market and basically there's been a wind back now where we've seen saudi arabia give clear indication that, they, that they're prepared to supply more into the market more crude into the market they've been producing at record highs at 10.7 million barrels a day and and I think there's there's a sort of a more a calm calmness in terms of how much the market crude market will be supplied at the moment. Mm. Paul, fair point, and it's not just the supplies uh, increase that we are uh, tackling with right now. It also is about demand concerns because this year, next year, even OPEC, the International Monetary Fund, have talked about lower demand estimates. Uh, the China slowdown is yet another factor to that. Yeah, but that's also been a concern for sure. I mean, that has played into the the short term short term sell off um the global economic fears but i think overall it's supply that's going to be it looks like the dominating dominating tr overall long term trend of the market yes we, yes there has been some concern especially around emerging markets as well but china is also a slight risk around a, a slowdown in china but at the same time you've got strong us uh, economy and I think that still demand is going to be fairly strong by the looks of flat analytics numbers at least for next year. And, and the demand isn't the only supportive factor, Paul, because the U.S. sanctions on Iran that take place on 4th of November, uh, there isn't a lot of clarity around that on whether or not and how much will the U.S. give in sense of allowance or extension. Uh, uh, what are you reading in what, what the statements that we have right now? Basically, there's... There is an unknown about waivers. What we're seeing so far is that, that China, and Iran, China and India hold pretty much all the cards in the sense that they are the big, big consumers of Iranian crude. And, and at the moment, that hasn't dropped off significantly from China and India. They're still, we're still getting, trying to get clarity on waivers. Whether they, you also have got to remember that, that Iran is also finding new ways of, of supplying crude. That they're, they're turning off their ship's transponders so they're not detected, uh, according to lots of sources. And so there's also the question mark is how much, how much of a, a sell-off is going, uh, how much of a, of a shortfall of Iranian crude is going to be? And according to Platt's analytics numbers, we've already seen sort of 700,000 barrels a day come off since April. And it's probably going to be, the sharpest drop is going to be this month and in November, we, we'd like to see another a million barrels a day come off by the end of the year. And that's still, still going to be significant. And that's where we've got to see where, how much Saudi Arabia can absorb that and, and how much, not just Saudi Arabia, but we've seen Russia and United Arab Emirates also increasing production and saying they've got a little bit of extra capacity to sort of meet that shortfall. Oh, well, absolutely. And there are lots of factors to watch out for as we move ahead for the rest of 2018. But before we let you go, Paul, what is your sense on the prices? Because if you look at the 20 international banks and brokerages report, you get to see levels between $60 to $100 on the higher side for the next six to eight months. What is your sense on where are we closing this year and the initial 2019? Where do you see the prices ranging? 
Well, we've seen, we've seen, we did a survey of, of analysts recently, and they saw an average of around $75 to $80 a barrel during 2019. All right, Paul, thank you so much for joining us. That is the view then from S&P Global Platts. $75 to $80 per barrel of an average in case of the Brent crude oil prices is where they see that one ranging at. All right, uh, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining in uh, with uh, some of that uh, commodity uh, sort of uh, cues. Uh, we are uh, going to uh, sort of focus back on uh, the stock market. Ashwini Gujral is with us uh, with uh, what he's making of things. Ashwini, uh, morning again. Your, uh, uh, your assessment, I mean, at, at one point, the Nifty was down 25 points. It was looking like we'd probably see, I mean, a full recovery. Not quite, 55 lower now. See, basically, U.S. goes up, we go down. U.S. goes down, we go down. Now, you know, there's an end to this game. My sense is that you will see a recovery in the second half and uh, put a, a day's low type of stop. And uh, the way, you know, a lot of stocks, large stocks are moving up, it looks very likely that could happen here and even in the rest of the markets because, uh, you know, uh, Asia, EMs, etc. are fairly oversold. Plus, we are very close to 99.50 at least from here, a sustainable rally uh, will probably happen. And, uh, you know, everything is in place. You know, there is total pessimism. Uh, there are no buyers. So this is the kind of place from where, you know, extraordinary rallies tend to shape up. So uh, that being said, uh, Maruti is a buy with a stop of 6,700, target of 6,950. VIP Industries are buy with a stop of 408, target of 421. And Raymond is a buy with a stop of 67, uh, 670, target of 705. Okay. Uh, well, Ashwini, a couple of numbers are coming out today. So I just wanted to get a chart check on a couple of these stocks. ITC, Dr. Reddy's, ICICI Bank. You know, the way market is positioned, any number that comes out, will probably get a positive reaction. Hmm. But uh, I would think uh, ICICI and ITC look a bit better than Dr. Reddy. Okay. All right, Ashni, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and taking us through all of those um, strategies and views on the technicals of the stocks. Just want to point out one stock, Seat is actually up around 4 odd percent. It was a mixed quarter for them. Revenue growth was much better than expectations, but the margins were a bit uh, subdued. But overall, that stock, which has lost around 45 percent year to date, is seeing some amount of traction on the upside post numbers. So up around 4 odd percent for that stock. We'll uh, take a break, but up next, uh, we'll get you more stocks in focus and uh, we'll get you some earnings as well.